Welcome to this next video on GSB new features. We're going to talk about how to build systems faster, that's with less human input time, and how to give an edge in out of sample performance. The edge is by using the oscillators that consistently give better results than those that consistently give poorer results. There is a video dedicated to this and it covers these sorts of things in a little bit more detail, but I'm going to outline the methodology that I'm using today. I'm looking at the S&P 500 futures and I am using data from the year 2000 to the year 2015 and I am leaving every second day out of sample, but I'm doing it in bursts of 80 days. So you can see here that the end date is 2018, which is from a year ago. And the dates here are set to June the 30th, 2015. So this gives me one type of out of sample data. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at data from 2015 to February 2018. And I'm going to look at every single day in there. And then I'm going to look at 2018 February to 2019, which gives us another out of sample period. The weakness of using just like a year out of sample like this is you're extremely dependent on market conditions. And so we're now looking at a number of different regimes and methods of out of sample data. 2018 was a volatile year on the S&P 500, but it was actually a very difficult year. So if you based all your out of sample results just on this one year, it's not really a good picture. If you look at silver, for example, some of these years from 2015 to 2018 were quite difficult, but 2018 was extremely easy to trade. But the fact that this was the case on 2018 doesn't mean that the future data is going to be just as easy or just as hard because markets change enormously one year to another. For example, the S&P in 2017 was extremely low volatility. 2018 was very high volatility. So if you chose something that worked only in 2018 and applied it to 2019, you've probably got a very bad outcome. Now what we have in today's build of GSB is some new features. And I'm going to cover something that will give you a mild edge in performance out of sample. Currently GSB has about 38 indicators roughly. And some of these indicators are going to work better than others. And my research has shown that this is very market dependent. So a different market is going to give quite a different result of indicators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build roughly 40,000 systems to see what indicators work best and what indicators don't work so well. And you can see here, we've started from the year 2000, which is when the data starts, to February 2018. That's a global date. So GSB cannot see any data outside of that. But then we've got our window from the year 2000 to June 2015. And we're going to look at every second day here. And we're going to do this all through macros. So the first thing we do is after we've built the systems is we put results into stats A. And I'll show this happening as time goes on. We then get our parameter stats. We then change the every 80 days to the opposing 80 days. We then do stats again and stats B. Now this might not become clear when you're looking at this, but as we go through the video, you'll see this in greater detail. We then do parameter stats again because we want to look at what the best indicators are in the pre-2015 data with the out of sample days and the post-2015 data. But nothing in the parameter stats is going to look at 2015. 18 February onwards because I want that to be out of sample. We're then going to change the dates mode from trade to don't trade, which means we're going to look at 2015 June to 2018 February, and we're going to look at every single day of that data. 
We're then going to put that into stats. We're then going to change the global dates, which is the period here to include 2019. And then we're going to change the dates mode to don't trade, which will give us the 2018 only results. And we're going to put those results into stats E. So what I'll do is I would like to build this on 40,000 systems. And for some people that might take too long, you can do it on significantly less, but the results won't be as accurate, which doesn't matter too much. But at 40,000 systems, each test was very consistent, not totally, but close in its results every time we did this. So what I'm going to do is I will just build a thousand systems so we can see the process. Now this is the manager and I've set this so it will run five workers. I don't really want a lot more than that because we're only building a thousand systems. So that's going to go to various cloud workers, which can be your own machines or it can be machines in the public GSB cloud. On the S&P 500, I'm just using two indicators. Normally for building systems, I'd use three, but the problem with using three to test the indicators is there's too much chance that you get an indicator that doesn't do a lot to give a noisy perspective on what indicators work best and what ones don't. Secondary filter I've got set to close less previous daily close, big point value. This will probably change in GSB2, the formatting of that, because secondary filter is the one thing you have to get right on each market, otherwise your results will suffer greatly. And we're going to try and fix that issue of human error in GSB2. So this will take about two minutes to find some workers and get the workers to report back to the manager. So here we can see we've picked up three workers and likely more will come in a minute or so. Note also this C slash US figure, how that's on 35 right now. If you build 40 or 50,000 systems, it can be harder for GSB to find non-duplicate systems, and this number will increase greatly, which means it's harder for you to get more and more systems. And if it gets too high, or this whole process just takes too long, you might as well just stop the process. So now we have five workers that are running. So what you can see here is a system that's built from the year 2000 to 2015. Every second day is out of sample. And you can see if I click on nth to trade, that's the out of sample result of that particular system. And if I clicked on dates to no trade, you'll see the results from 2015 to 2018. And that's what we're doing in the macro. That's going to be all automated. So now we've built our thousand plus systems and the macros are going to start changing these date fields which is just done here. You can see active tasks on the right here. It's changing the nth mode from no trade to trade, which is giving us the out of sample results from 2000 to 2015. There are every second day that we hadn't seen in the burst of 80 days. And you can see that when I hold the mouse over there, we've got clipboard A has got the 1387 systems and it's got the results of purely in sample data. Now it's got the results of the out of sample data. And you can see that we've gone from, say, $30,000 in sample to $23,000 out of sample. And that's the results from 2000 to 2015 every second day not seen. So in this case, there's a 22% degradation in results. This test isn't very valid because the sample size is really small and a thousand systems is not big enough to make a extremely solid statistical case. Now we've got the results from 2015 to 2018 and you can see here that we got 11 just under $12,000 profit and just a mild degradation and profit factor of 1.51. You can see the macro is running away here. And the next thing it's going to do is test the data from February 2018 to January 2019. You can see there was an average of $6,000 profit there. 
Now the interesting thing is we can now click down here and go to parameters and we have shortcut keys now where I can get rid of the top screen. We can see that the top one third of systems use these indicators in green and the bottom one third of indicators use these ones here. So for example if you look at Bollinger Band it had 76 systems in the top one third and 29 systems in the bottom one third. So the ratio there is 76 over 76 plus 29 that gives you 0.724. Now these results are not terribly valid because the sample size is too small. But now the really exciting thing is we can now select the oscillators that we want and I'll typically use the ones in green. I mean you could go further down here or just choose the top view here but the default is probably just to go like this. Do right click, apply to optimizer settings and you've now got 15 indicators here selected. So if we save the settings we can now go building systems with just these top 15 oscillators. So I'll show you how we do that now. I've saved the settings so they'll be opened on the next GSB that I open. I'm going to put a header there and call that top 15. So to go through this process again I need to change the dates here back to 2018 to 28, change this date back to 2015. We now go back to three indicators which is the default recommended number of indicators in building a system. I'm also going to use this third exit here which means if the secondary filter and primary filter reverse then we're going to exit a trade and then I'm going to build about 50,000 systems. So this is the results. The top is using all 38 indicators. Our fitness was net profit times average trade. So fitness in the top is 5072 and that's the in-sample data from 2000 to June 2015 and the bursts of 80 trades in a row followed by 80 trades we don't see. So we have 5072 in the top one, in the bottom using only the top indicators, we've got a slightly reduced in sample fitness figure. Then if we look at the out of sample every 80 days from 2000 to 2015, we have 3868 with 38 indicators and 3916, so a mild increase. Then when we come to the 2015 to 2018 February data, we've got something like a 20% increase in results. And then the 2018 February to 2019 February results, we've got quite a significant increase from 726 to 827. Now keep in mind this entire build process and also the oscillator statistics had never seen that last year of data. So I think this was a successful test. I had similar improvements on silver which is a completely different market and there's probably a lot of variation on how this technique could be used whether you want to try with one indicator or three indicators and take the top just few indicators or take more than the top half but this is at least a proof of concept and it shows that this is giving a worthwhile but not essential edge to improve trading by using only the best possible indicators. The help file should be updated with more details of how to operate this. If you got something out of this video then please hit the like button and try GSB for yourself. Thanks for watching.